safe color to start with if you're embarking on a journey looking for whites because whites can be quite confusing so I'm just being asked have we gone live let me just check yeah we are live I am live just checking that we are live here we are live sorry so I'm not sure whether you were, you were able to hear everything that I've just gone through it took a little bit to show up so we are live sorry about that just double checking I'd hate to be talking to myself for the next half an hour okay so back to talking about whites so Chris white if you're embarking on a journey and you're unsure of where to start Chris white is the most fantastic white easy to use and very adaptable in most environments um, some of the other top turning whites as well you've got cotton sheets you've got cotton ball white on white um, winter ice which is a cooler white so cooler whites generally work really really well in areas that lack sorry cooler whites work really well in areas that have a lot of sun so something like white and white would work really really well if you've got an environment that you're wanting to paint white that is you know just drenched in natural sunlight um, winter ice to here a white brilliant white miss universe again is a cooler white um, also princess bling windy beach and cradle white so there's a really good start there if you're embarking on a white journey not sure where to begin um, what I do recommend though is if you are looking at whites, if you go into the hardware store and you are standing at the colour wall and deliberating over what sort of white to um, choose, and you know, and I'll be honest, when you stand there and you look at the whites and you put them all together, they can start to sort of all blend in together. So go armed. So what I would recommend is take with you a piece of um, white computer paper, fold it in half, and when you're looking at your colour chip, pop it up against the white piece of computer paper and what it actually does is because you're putting that white on white so to speak you can actually see the undertone of your the white color chip coming to life so it helps to differentiate because whites aren't just white they will start to um, play and adapt and look different within your environments and it's not only the light and you'll hear me talk about things like um, flooring lighting um, the environment that it's in so things as well like your window furnishings um, even the color of your furniture can influence your white but when you begin your white journey it's understanding that all whites um, generally have some type of tint in it which will then once it's in an area will then start to come to life so if you're standing at that hardware store having that white piece of paper and then using that as a backdrop and laying your color chips up against, against that once you do it you'll see what I mean you'll be able to see the undertone that sits within the white come to life um, the other thing you can look for is a color chip called brilliant white brilliant white is our stock standard white in the can and that's going to also aid when you're popping the white other white color chips on top of that it's going to aid and allow you to see the undertone so there's a couple of tips there for you when you're beginning your color journey um, and look when you're testing whites and even when you're testing any color I think it's really really important to acquire a sample pot and I talk about this a lot and the reason being is as I've just touched on when you're putting a color within your environment it's all of those things that can influence your color and can make the color look um, certainly different and I've talked to many consumers at the color wall who have picked up a color chip and said I'm going to have that they go and get themselves four liters they paint a room and they stand back and go it doesn't look like I thought it would look so it's really important to test the color within your environment so and the best way to do that get yourself a sample pot when you're going to say perhaps a bunning store um, our paint comes in in um, on pallets and in between the layers of paint are what we have called pallet liners which are large pieces of cardboard so if you ask the friendly staff I'm sure they'd be more than happy to help you get yourself a piece of that cardboard and you want to cut a meter by a meter square so you're wanting a large sample I would give it three coats yes ordinarily our something like Endure is a two coat system you know like it's but because we're doing um, a bare or a blank piece of cardboard I do three so that first coat is going to aid as an undercoat and then once it is dry there's two areas within your home that you should test your color so the first one is so here's your wall here's your floor laying your piece of cardboard up against um, so it's sitting on the floor but laying up against the wall 
And so what you'll be able to do is in daylight, you'll see how the color works within your environment and taking into consideration if you've got things like a beautiful warm timber floor, etc., that may um, influence your color and warm up your white slightly. I use this analogy a lot. If you've got something like a red leather lounge, you may start to see a little bit of pink sort of, um, you know, transposing onto your white wall. So good to take that into consideration to know how the color is going to work with what you have within your space. Now the other area to test it as well is, so you've got your wall this time, you've got your ceiling. So popping it up against the wall so it's touching the ceiling and there you can see how the color is going to work in natural light. But also too, when you're turning on your artificial lighting or your night light, seeing how the color is going to perform in that environment because it's really important to understand how the color works for you. So a really good tip. I think it's a great way getting yourself a sample pot. It's probably the best let's just say somewhere between you know six to ten dollars that you're going to spend because it's really going to help you to see how that color is going to work within your space. Okay I hope that helps you all. Now also trending top or trending whites for exterior look one of the most commonly used whites is a color called um, it's a color bond color and it's called surf mist. Now I've had a lot of questions around using white on an exterior and um, understanding how that white is going to um, perform in an external environment and especially on the facade of a home. So again, sample pot is the best way. This time, once dry, you're going to test it um, outside in full sun and see how the color works for you. And then again, in areas that lack light. Now, full sun is really important because you want to ensure that your white has enough undertone or substance so that it's going to prevent glare. And one of the best ways, again, obviously the sample pot, but when you're selecting your white is to look at something that's called the LRV, which is the light reflectance value. So all colors have this um, and it, it helps to ensure that um, when you're looking at the color, it will help to ensure that you're selecting, in particular, we're talking about whites, selecting a white that's going to have enough substance to prevent that glare. So really, really important. So, oh, thank you, Vanessa. Hey, Fiona, thank you for your white recommendation last week for my kitchen. You're very welcome. I hope it worked out really, really well. And um, please feel free to share some photos um, once you have completed your renovation. We'd love to see it. Thanks, Vanessa. Okay, so where can you find the LRV? So all of our colors, um, we can go into www.torbmans.com.au and you can select, look out at website is very easy to navigate around. So you can select colors, then you can type in the search engine, the particular color that you're looking for, click on the color, and then you can find a lot of information around that color. Because as I said, every color has an LRV. But if, when we're talking about whites for exteriors, I would be looking at around about 65 to 75, because that's going to have enough substance to prevent glare. The last thing you want to do is be sitting outside or going outside at seven o'clock in the morning for your morning cup of tea and you need your sunglasses on because it's way too glary. So just to put it into perspective, LRV, light reflectance value, um, zero being black, 100 being white. So you're starting to work, you know, the higher you're going up, the high, the lighter it's getting. So sitting at around about 65 to 75 is a really good place to start. And I think from memory that surf mist sits at around about 67. So that just gives you an idea. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, what are some top trending greys? So there's a lot of debate around greys at the moment. And look, depends on, I like to categorize grey into four categories. So you have what's called, um, so there's a blue grey. Obviously it has more of a blue undertone. And then you have a purple or red based gray. So it does have that sort of purpley sort of undertone. Then you have a neutral style gray, which tends to have more of a green undertone. And then you have what's commonly referred to as grayish, which is a gray that has a brown undertone. So look, we're starting to see, and look, it will all depend. Look, trends, um, trends are designed to let you know what's happening out in the design world and you know a color forecast um, really takes homage from the trends that are happening um, locally and globally and they put together what's going to be the colors for the next season and we will have that for you all very soon um, but when you're looking at colors and when you're looking at 
grays, as I've just said, the category, like breaking them up into four. It all depends too on the style of your home. So for example, if you're looking at grays for the exterior, what style is your home? Do you have a coastal style home? Like are you living on the coast? So you'll find that grays that have that blue sort of undertone work extremely well in that sort of environment. That's not to say that you can't use a grey or you can't use um, a neutral style grey. I mean, obviously colours are very personal. It's entirely up to you what you want to use and how you want to use it. But um, I think it's really important when you're looking at an external environment and drawing upon what's happening in the surrounds to ensure that when you colour up your home, so to speak, it's going to sit really well within its environment. So we are seeing with colour, we're starting to see that it's warming up. So with whites, um, and you would have heard me talking about a colour that I do love. I tend to have um, be having a little bit of a love affair with this colour at the moment. It's a colour called Aria Ivory. It's a warmer white. And the reason I love it is it works so wonderfully well with um, what we're seeing on trend. Things like Terrazzo, things like Travertine. Um, it just sits beautifully and it's a warmer white. It works with that modern Mediterranean aesthetic. Um, I love it. I think it's just a fantastic white. So if you're starting to work, if any of those sort of substrates or elements that you're including in, you know, the renovation of your home, that is the white that I would be looking for. Um, but going back to greys, and we're starting to see, um, you know, warmer greys filtrate in. And so you're going to be looking at greys that have, I dare say, more of a sort of that grey undertone. And there are some beautiful colours that can sit within sort of that realm. So I'm, I just have my fan deck in front of me just so I can see whether I can show you a few. Um, I do like, there's a particular soft sort of gray called flint smoke, which sort of sits in between being neutral and in between um, neutral and sort of grayish. But then there's a beautiful, so I'll show you that one there and you'll have to excuse the look of my fan deck. It's very well loved. This one here is gorgeous. And I know looking at the screen, it's probably not doing itself justice because we're lit up, like I say, like a Christmas tree in here. But there is also, I think if you're looking for some greys and you're wondering where to start, have a look at these as well for the exterior of your home. Something like... Um, Brimstone smoke is just divine and it really is that sort of greyish feel. It sits really well with things like monument, surf mist, etc. And you can pair back some beautiful colours with it. You know, even um, tones like terracotta. Um, you could even use some beautiful um, earthy types of greens and even some wonderful lighter front door colours are going to sit with it really, really well. So that leads me on to the next question that we have, and it is, okay, what are some top, oh, sorry, what are the top colors for a front door? And then going on to how to paint a front door. Okay, so top trending colors for front doors, we're starting to see, and I guess it's because of what's trending as well, um, like, you know, and you've heard me just talk about modern Mediterranean aesthetics. So you could go for something. There's a beautiful color. And I did mention this last week. And I'm just going to see whether I can find it. It's called Bunda Noon. And it's a very soft sort of terracotta color. It's gorgeous. It's going to work um, with beautiful um, gray tones. It's going to work really, really well if you're doing more of a white aesthetic as well. So for your facade, having that beautiful white. Um, even colours that tend to have more, even a slight sort of goldy sort of tones going to work for a front door as well. We're seeing that. Let's not forget green. I think green and a very soft green, even going into a minty style green. A lot of people are asking for that. And then there's colours like, let me just have a look at the LRV, something even like this. Like your babbling stream. So that's a soft... It's a soft blue, but it has a little bit more of a sort of soft green undertone. Now, when you're looking for a front door color, here's something, and I touched on LRV before. So when you buy a new front door, and in particular a timber front door, sometimes there are stipulations around um, colors that can be used. And the reason they have that is because if you've got timber, and if you put a color on that's too dark, you risk the door um, twisting and warping, which can then potentially void your warranty. 
So one of the things that um, some door manufacturers will ask for is they will ask for a color to be 50 or greater. So it's really important when you're looking at front door colors to look for the LRV and ensure that the color is 50 or greater. 50 or lower means you're going into those darker, deeper tones, which are going to draw heat. And as I just said a moment ago, the door can you know, potentially twist and warp. So that's the first thing to consider. The second thing is some doors come pre-primed. Now, pre-primed, as we believe, they've been pre-primed for transportation purposes. So I would certainly ensure that you use a fantastic or an adequate um, undercoat, a primer seal undercoat. First of all, something like Torben's 3-in-1, giving it a coat of that. And then to paint your front door, we have a wonderful product, which is called Torben's Water-Based Enamel. Now, the beauty of using a water-based enamel, I'm going to see whether I can grab one of these. Here's something I prepared earlier. So a water-based enamel is non-yellowing. It's quick drying. Um, you've got minimal smell, and you're not going to end up with your door sort of sticking. So I think it's really important. And when you're using um, a water-based enamel, have a look at um, whether you want to go semi-gloss or gloss. Now, the reason I love to gloss, gloss up the front door, and the reason being it tends to intensify the color just a little bit more. So here's a couple, and the way you can see this is if you are at you know, your local hardware store, you've grabbed yourself a color chip, or you've purchased yourself a sample pot, you've painted out a, little, a sample, you've let that dry once dry, and you're wanting to see what it's gonna look like glossed up, get yourself a piece of clear sticky tape. So this, I'm sure you can see that there, it looks like it's working well. So this is the color chip off the color wall. Here, standard sort of a low sheen finish. What I have done is put clear sticky tape over one side of it, and you can see how that color intensifies. Same applies when we're looking at this blue here, same trick, you can see how the color intensifies. So when you gloss up a color, that's kind of what happens. And I think it looks fantastic. So there's a few color tips there for um, front door colors, along with you know ensuring that you do your adequate preparation and using a product that's fit for purpose. And don't forget the gloss. And I've just shown you why. Okay, so we've got another question come through from Danny. Hi Danny, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we have natural wood architraves, doors, and a timber kitchen. Will a white work well with this? So you're wanting to, let's just clarify there, you're wanting to just paint your walls a white, I presume, and yes, it will work well. Immediately, I think of a color called, um, it depends, before I go shooting off a color, let me just um, ask another question, please. Danny, what sort of flooring do you have? Um, just so I can sort of take in the whole um, scenario and also your um, bench top, sort of what color is your bench top? And then I can sort of give you a few suggestions for some whites. So I look forward to you giving me a little bit more information. Thank you. Okay, and I'll, okay, I can see, yes, painting walls white. Fantastic, Danny. Um, I'll just wait for if there's any information on your flooring and your bench top, and then I can um, elaborate on suggestions. Thanks. Okay, so what colors to use in an open floor plan? Okay, let's talk about this. Lots of things to consider. So it depends on the pitch of your roof. You know, do you have um, open floor plan, but is it a small space? You're wanting to create the illusion of more space. If that is the case, you can certainly look to use a white. And then what I would do with the white is use the white also on... Um, so you can do one color effectively. Let's just say crisp white because it's our number one white. So you could do crisp white on your walls in a low sheen. You could do crisp white on your ceiling, but in a ceiling white. And then you could also do crisp white on your doors and trims, but in um, whether you choose to use a semi-gloss or gloss, entirely up to you. Um, so what that does is sort of in an open plan or even in an area that's small, it creates the illusion of more space. It tends to open the space up because where your wall meets your ceiling, and especially even if you've got cornice and, and say you're doing your wall in a deeper color or not even a deeper color, let's just say um, a particular, let's go, what's a great soft color? Let's say you're doing your wall in something like pebble beige, which is a soft beige. And then you're doing your ceiling in a white. So when you look at the space, what happens is your eye will stop where the wall meets the ceiling because that's where the color breaks. So your eye is drawn to that. And then from that, 
your eye can sort of look around the room, size up the room, and then you can sort of work out whether it's a small space or a large space. And so quite the opposite works when you use sort of that one color up and over. So what happens is the eye sort of doesn't really have anywhere to stop. So it continually looks around. And so that creates the illusion of more space. So look, you can pretty well, you know, in a smaller space for me, I think a white in that sort of instance will create the illusion of more space and then open it up. But in an open floor plan, you can pretty well use any color you like. The only thing to consider is the amount of light that you receive within the space and the other elements that feature within your design. So when you're thinking of using um, color, think about you know what color is the kitchen going to be? What color bench top? What color flooring? Um, even to the point of what color window frames, etc. So taking everything in will help then to um, navigate or narrow down um, color selections. But yeah, don't be don't be afraid to use color. I think. Injecting color into a space can certainly inject personality. Um, and even in an open floor plan, if you're not too sure, pick colors that are a little bit softer and pick colors that are a little bit more neutral. So things like greens, green tends to be quite a neutral tone or even soft sort of uh, grayish tones. So something that has more of that sort of soft beige undertone, again, is quite a neutral tone. And from that, you can start to add other elements and other things into the design to you know, inject more color if you like. Okay, so thank you, Danny, for coming back to me. Okay, so you have a timber bench top and oak color flooring floating floor. Okay, fantastic. The timber on the bench top is similar to a spotted gum. It's a large space. Sounds wonderful. So taking into consideration that you've got something that is similar to a spotted gum, you could use um, the following colors. So you could have a look at Taubman's South Pole. You could also have a look at Aspen Snow. I'd certainly even have a look at Aria Ivory. I think that could work really, really well up against the timber. Um, so these are softer, I suppose, softer white slash neutrals, if you like. Not a huge amount of color, but enough when they go on the wall that you can see up against white. You can see that um, there is color in it, if you like. Um, if you're wanting something that's slightly more intensified, let me have a look here. There is a wonderful color also called um, Tenacity. That has a little bit more color to it. So it all just depends on what your... Oh, okay, sorry, it is a white. Sorry, I'm going off track here. So yeah, the, the colors that I first mentioned I think would work really well. So Aspen Snow, South Pole... Um, you could even look at Alpine Snow. That's still a white. It's a little bit softer. And you know, I'm going to dare say it, and I know everybody that watches this knows exactly what I'm going to say. You could even look at crisp, crisp white. It's a beautiful white, and it would work really, really well with everything else that you've got going on there. But again, if you're going to test those colors, Danny, um, I mentioned before grabbing yourself a large piece of cardboard and painting out three... Um, coats of color from the stamp pot onto the cardboard and testing it within your environment. Really important to see how the color is going to work with things like obviously your timber kitchen, um, your flooring, etc., but also the lighting that you have because color obviously can take on a different form depending on lighting, etc. So that's what I would recommend testing those first prior. I hope that helps. If you're wanting any further information, please pop something else into the feed, Danny. Thank you. Okie dokie, what else do I have here? Um, what are some top trending colors for home exterior? I think I touched on that before. Um, we're starting to see, look, it depends again, and I'll reiterate this, it depends on the style of your home. And um, we are seeing warmer tones being used and we're still seeing a lot of, because this seems to be, and it still is happening, and I think we've been talking about this on and off for the past couple of years, um, a Hamptons facade seems to be something that everybody loves. So it's looking at colors that are going to help bring that to life. Um, you're very welcome, Danny. Thank you very much. Yeah, I do, I do suggest having a look at those. I think either one of those is going to work really, really well for you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so going back to top trending colors. So for a Hampton style home, which seems to be, I'll be honest, every second question has been around about this. 
look at greys that tend to have a little bit more blue and it's no secret one of the colors that I do love is a color called Taubman's Oyster Bar and since um, since we've been talking you know not that long ago Colorbond released a wonderful white called Dover White now let me just see here and I don't know how well this is going to work on screen because again you may see this here so that's oyster bar there and this one here is Dover white but they sing together they look beautiful they work extremely well they help to create that sort of Hamptons facade um, so that would be something I would definitely look at if that is the style of home that you are um, looking to create or whether you're coastal etc that's I think a fantastic color selection you could also use um, surf mist with oyster bar and again they work extremely well together um, other colors I think that uh, we're going to see more of that people there's been a lot of um, sort of ask for neutral style colors for the exterior so something like this there's a beautiful color here called Foxdale and actually you know what I have a, I have that on my backdrop here behind me that for an external application with again you could use if you're liking a lighter style roof you could again do something like this here is your surf mist they again work beautifully together or if you're wanting a darker a darker sort of style roof you could use let me just have a look here I know monument would work yeah look at that you could also use fox style and monument together to to be the basis of your color scheme and then inject some other colors if you like. I mean the perfect, the way to create that beautiful, um, you know, color scheme that is going to be the envy of the street and get everyone talking is how you use the color. So it's not only selecting the color, but it's also the placement of color that's really important. So we have what's called 60-30-10. So 60% um, is the primary color. 30% is the secondary color and then 10% is the accent color. So that works extremely well internally, but you know what, you can do it outside as well. So your majority of your 60% may be a color just on the facade and then your 30% of the color may be what you're seeing on your roof and your guttering and trims. And then 10% that accent color may be what you choose to paint your front door. So that just gives you an idea of how you can use color. Okay, so Andrew, thank you very much for joining us. I'll quickly answer this and then I may need to um, continue this in the feed once I finish streaming. So some whites seem to yellow over time. We've been told whites with some black don't do this. Is that true? How do you know a white has black in it? So I am wondering, so my experience with white yellowing over time it may be dependent on the product that you are using so when we're talking so enamel so enamel so an oil-based enamel is um is known for yellowing over time so that's why i tend to talk primarily about water-based enamel because if you're doing let's say you know a white on white sort of aesthetic and you're doing a beautiful white interior on the walls and then you, you're wanting to have your doors and trims in a beautiful white using a water-based enamel will ensure that the color is going to stay um, white it's going to stay true to color and it's not going to yellow or golden up so that tends to be my experience with um, white yellowing due to the product so and it generally tends to happen when you're using an oil-based enamel so I'm not too sure about whites with some black not doing that. I'd have to sort of take that one to our technical team before I can answer that. I mean, the only, the only sort of understanding or you know issues I've had with whites um, yellowing again are back to um, using an oil-based enamel. And so, how do you know a white has black in it? That's a really good question. So, some whites, when used internally, will look really, really blue. And that can be two things. It can be due to the lighting that you have, or it can also be due to the white just having black tint in it. 
and then it's going to sometimes um, cause it to look a little bit blue. You know, a lot of whites um, are quite complex in what tints go in them to create that beautiful white. So for example, I talk a lot about crisp white. Crisp white tends to have um, just raw umber in it. Now this is going to sound pretty horrid, but raw umber is sort of a murky sort of brown tint. But what it does is it creates the most wonderful white that has a very soft sort of, very soft sort of warmth to it. Um, and which makes it really, really um, appealing and really, really easy to use in most internal applications. Um, a lot of other whites, when you start to look at them, some of our other whites, and I'm just trying to think. So Akimbo, I think, has, oh, I think from memory, it has a little bit of blue, red, and then maybe even a little bit of black in it. Um, and I'm thinking I maybe I'd have to double check this, but something like South Pole, I believe, would probably have a little bit of... Um, white, a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of red, and maybe a little bit of ochre. But that tends to be, you know, what happens with whites. Whites aren't just whites. There's generally quite a complex formulation to create that perfect white. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I'll certainly come and have a look and answer some more questions for the next half an hour. I'll be uh, not in front of the camera, but I'll be behind the scenes here sitting in front of the laptop. Um, certainly happy to take any more questions that you do have. So that concludes tonight's session. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us this evening. Um, we won't be here next week, but we'll be back the week after. So hold on to your questions until then, and I'll be very happy to answer them for you in fortnight's time. Um, until then, everybody, stay safe. And as we always say, happy painting. Good evening. Bye.